fire sprinkler system layout for a single family ranch home. It's going to be per the 2016 uh, edition of NFPA 13 D. And we're going to be designing with CPVC pipe. And to make things simple, we're going to design uh, for a pump and tank so we don't have to de uh, dive too deep into uh, water supplies right now. And um, we're going to be using, uh, designing with a sprinkler head. It's a Senju uh, RC Res 4.9K factor sprinkler. And we're going to be designing uh, to 16 by 16 spacing. Uh, so 13 gallons a minute is what we're going to design to with our calculations. We won't go into that in this video, but um, uh, we were going to just important to note we're doing the 16 by 16 spacing for the purpose of this. So uh, using CPVC piping, let's go dig into our now we're using uh, draft site. This is basically uh, the same thing as AutoCAD LT. And here is our ranch home. Um, I just drew this in Chief Architect. This is it actually. Uh, it's a single family ranch home. Uh, I do all of my fire sprinkler stuff though in DWG file, which is uh, AutoCAD or draft site. So this is my template that I inserted the file into. Um, typically when you get, you're doing a job like this, you might get a file from the architect uh, that looks something like this. This is what it looked like when I exported it from chief architect. And, um, I just made it so it's all the same color. We're going to clean it up a little bit more here. Um, let me get rid of this. I don't need to save it. Um, so we don't need any of these architectural dimensions. Um, we don't want to specify that on a fire sprinkler drawing. So I'm just going to isolate that to make it easy to delete them and bring it back. Um, there's also these roof lines that we don't need for what we're doing. So I'll do the same thing, isolate, oops, delete, bring it back. And I don't know what that is. We don't need that though. Uh, now this line here is a ceiling change. So we got a 10 foot ceiling in the great room here and nine foot most everywhere else. Looks like we got a tray ceiling in this master bedroom here. But uh, for fire sprinkler drawings, we don't need uh, stuff like this window label. So I'm gonna get rid of those two, same way. Isolate and just select them all. Here's door labels. Delete those. Let's see, it's looking a little better now. Um, let's just go with that for now. So um, <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna be putting heads in basically all you know, all the bedrooms. Basically, let's talk about where that doesn't need to be heads. We don't need sprinklers in the garage in 13D. And then we don't need sprinklers in closets like this one that are under 24 square feet. And then bathrooms that are under 25 square feet. I mean, 55 square feet. So a lot of times I like to kind of start with um, calling those out. Uh, you don't have to call them out, but um, I like to do it because uh, just can save some time. Uh, with plans examiners, just ha make it easy as possible for them. Um, gonna use this uh, 
get area command in draft site to figure out how many square feet this closet is. And it looks like it's over just over 10. I'm just going to put 11. And we got another closet over here. It's not going to need sprinklers, I can tell. Uh, looks like we're 17.09. Really could put 17. But I'm just going to put 18 to make it conservative. Um, this closet uh, is going to need a sprinkler. I can tell just by looking at it. Oops, I'll measure it just to let you see. Enter and it's 33.1 square feet and it's anything over 24. So um, I usually start out, I'm just gonna mark this. This kind of just shows that I checked it out, that closet and it needs a head. Um, I'm gonna start by putting the head in the center of the room. I find the center by doing a diagonal line across. Now, I'm not going to end up leaving it there. It's just a starting point. Uh, a lot of times the, the light fixture is right in the center of the room, and I, I don't want to put, put it right on top of the light fixture. But let me go through. Um, I think I got all the closets. Uh, pantry is going to need a sprinkler. Um, let's go to bathrooms now. Um, let's put it there. Just measure to each corner. Enter. So we're 37.2. I'm just going to say 38. Um... This is kind of weird to have this label like this. It's not necessary. Don't really need the dimensions of the bathroom either. Just clean it up a little bit. Um, okay, now this over here, even though it's just a toilet, that is considered a bathroom per NFPA 13D. So we measure this room by itself. And we come up with 15.1. So we'll go with 16 square feet. And I'm going to modify this to fit in here a little better. Um, the same thing, it's under 55 square feet in this room. It might be all of the rooms could be under 55 square feet. And which is kind of weird, you know, like if this was all open, if these walls weren't here, then it would need a sprinkler. But since it's broken up into smaller rooms, it may not get one at all. So that's 41, so that doesn't need a head either. So, but that, not where I wanted it. Move it down a little bit. Okay, 41 square feet. No sprinklers. So I'm going to take that off. Um, okay, so that's all my bathrooms. Um, the only other thing I see that I need to uh, be concerned about at all is this oven. Um, we have to... Uh, keep our sprinklers away from heat sources a minimum distance 
and with a uh, normal or standard temperature head, uh, we got to be 18 inches away from a range. So I have this little deal that I put on there just to show the plans examiner that we are well away. Every oven's a little bit different, so we make it fit the oven that they got shown. Um, you know, if it's a big fancy house, they could have a huge oven that's a little bit like has five burner or I don't know, another row of burners or whatever. Um, so we just have to keep our head out of there. If we can't, we could get closer and just use a higher temperature sprinkler, but <clears throat> uh, I'm pretty sure we can stay out of there just fine. And so this line, uh, the ceiling on this side of that line is nine feet. The ceiling on this side is 10 feet. So we're thinking about sprinklers. They're on the ceiling. So we don't want any information on here that has to do with the floors. Um, really, I could get rid of all this cabinets and stuff, but uh just makes it a little bit easier to see where the oven's going to be i think uh cuz usually when somebody's installing this it's none of this stuff is in here it's just a you know bare framing so i think it helps a little bit to have some of that stuff on there to visualize what's going on for the installer so i'm just going to go ahead now and I'm going to run a diagonal line through the rest of these rooms. I'm not sure what that line is. I'm just going to delete that. Oh, there's another one. What is this? Roof baselines. We definitely don't need that. Let's get rid of those. Clean up our drawing a little bit. All right, so... Our great room, go from the corner to the corner of the ceiling change. Um, here, I'm going to go this direction. Um, now our entry here, we'll need it. Sprinkler. I think I'm going to treat this like two rooms. Put on... Uh, Diagonal here. This is basically like a mud entry room here. And this is like a hallway and they're just connected and calling it one room. But we're kind of got two things going on, two different areas. Um, now the laundry room will need a sprinkler. Um, then one more up here and this master might need a couple. Nope, probably one. We might put two. Um, something to consider. We didn't put, uh, I just drew this house plan and I didn't uh, show any ceiling fans. Pretty likely 10 foot ceiling here, tray ceiling that they would have a fan. So um, got to be three feet away from the center of that hanging uh fan fixture so we uh probably will end up just putting two heads in here um so i'm going to grab a head symbol and just start snap into the midpoints of these lines to place heads quickly and I missed that one. Uh, again, this is just a starting point. We're not going to stick with this because I realize that a bunch of these are just smack dab in the middle of the lights more than likely. Oops, we need one in the hallway. Let me go the other way.
Um, okay, one more. Let's copy. So if some of you guys are just starting out, you may be interested uh, in sprinklers as a contractor. Um, uh, there's a couple of programs out there that are real expensive that they really try to push at the supply houses. And um, I've been doing sprinkler design for over 20 years and uh, never needed to use one of those programs. Um, I do have experience. I'm, I've used Revit and you can get um, some add-ons for Revit. Uh, some of these guys make as well. Um, it's just really not necessary to be honest. Um, do a job like a sprinkler job uh, in a Revit in Revit uh, with, I don't know. From what I can tell my experience in talking to other people, it takes about twice as long as it does doing it 2D. Um, and draft site used to be free. They just started charging it for it. Um, 200 bucks a month or no, a year. I'm sorry. Uh, as of right now, 2022, I mean, this is December, but, uh, you know, it's, it does plenty, uh, basically what you used to have to do with AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT, uh, which when I first, uh, discovered draft site, it was free and AutoCAD LT was about $900 a year. Okay, so let's get into it now. Um, I just, you know, this room is bigger than 16 by 16, so we're going to need more heads. Um, I have these that sometimes can be helpful uh, to help uh, some of my techs use them uh, when they're doing layout. Um, if you put that on the sprinkler, you can see there's plenty of coverage in that room. And uh, we can move that head quite a ways. It can be eight feet off of both these walls. And so this is gonna work fine if there's a light in the center of that room. Um, let's do the same thing here. I'll move it with this head, go to the end point eight feet off of both of those walls. Um, this great room is uh, a little bit of a problem, kind of ridiculous, just barely over. Um, you could probably get away with uh, only having uh, one this way, but I wouldn't push it this way. Um, you're getting coverage from this head, you know, like I would uh, just move my heads apart. We got to keep them at least eight feet apart. So I'm going to go 48 inches that way, eight feet that way. Um, you know, your distance to the wall here eight foot one man for the purposes of this we're just going to go ahead and put four heads in there but you know that's really a judgment call depending on the situation you could move it to where it's eight feet off of the wall and you're less than 16 feet from this head i believe so you're, you see it's only 14 feet so you're probably golden uh, with this elevation change though, um, let's see, this is higher. So I'm going to treat it like there's a wall right there, even though, you know, at this distance, it's fine. So I'm not going to do that. Never mind. We're just going to do it the way I'm, you know, design subjective kind of evolves as we're going along. There's only so many ways you can do it. The heads are at 16 foot spacing maximum. 
So kind of designs itself, you know, we just start laying out the heads. Um, if I use my thing again, we can see that all of these heads have plenty of coverage, like these overlap. I'm gonna say that's good. Even though we got the elevation change, we're more than three feet away from it. It's only a foot drop. We should be totally fine. I do need to get these. Let me put that back. They're an inch off the wall. So I'm gonna move it back. So they are kosher. Now, all of these are fine. It's just that they're in the middle of where the lights are probably at. So I'm gonna come down eight feet from this wall and just draw a line. You know, these uh, sprinklers have a cover plate on them. So you really don't see them, you just see the cover plate. Some people like to have them lined up with the lights, like so, you know, move them out this way, 48 inches, we'll say, and eight feet this way. It's eight feet minimum spacing. Um, but we can be all the way down, like this would be in line with where a ceiling fan is. But if we move it all the way off, keep everything eight feet, we can also minimize the amount of pipe we use. It really doesn't matter. It's just a judgment call for your design. Track home like this, I would, uh, you know, I'm not saying this is a track home, but this is kind of typical what a lot of track homes would have. Um, just do it eight feet off the wall and don't worry about lining up with lights is normally what we would do. Um, and then in the higher end, some guys line up with lights in the mansions, but it's totally just depends on what you've sold the customer. If you didn't tell them anything about it, they probably won't even notice. So this title ref layer doesn't appear when we print. It's something I use for these construction lines when I'm laying stuff out. But I'm gonna turn this into a pipe. Uh, the pipes are on layer pipe. So now this is a sprinkler pipe with these heads on it. I'm gonna move this down a little closer and change to layer pipe, draw a line from this head. I'm not moving any down or down any further because there's, you know, theoretically there's probably a closet shelf right here. And I'll just keep it away from that so it can reach under there. Um, how are we gonna line up this other stuff now? Oh, so one thing to think about, I didn't really discuss, I guess, is, you know, this, um, I, we don't have a full set of plans because I just drew this, but a typical house, uh, like this these days is going to have uh, a wood truss roof. So, you know, we're going to want to run our piping perpendicular to those roof trusses. Um, so that's why we're running predominantly the, the line this way. So we're, we're going to be going perpendicular to those trusses as we lay out across there. Because if you go the other way and you go in between, um, there's nothing to support your pipe. So you have to add wood or, and, you know, and a hanger. <clears throat> so as much as possible, we want to run perpendicular so we can just attach our hangers directly to there, to the uh, trusses. Um, let's, let's see, this one's eight feet off of that wall. 
How about let's line these up. Uh, we might be hitting a light right there. I'm going to go eight feet off of that wall. Just drawing a construction line here. Happens to be I'm on the pipe layer, but I don't want to leave that there. So I'm moving that head back to there. Just going to go ahead and use this to trim that pipe real quick. And then I'm going to delete these. So I'm just, you can't be closer than six inches to the wall with these sprinklers. Um, so I'm maxed out eight feet from that wall, but I'm, you know, totally covering this room. I'm safe. I'm not going to hit any lights. Um, and so they probably have a bench here for removing shoes. It's possible they could have a cabinet up here, high, higher level, or want to put one later. So I'm going to uh, move this head over to this side a little bit. Make sure I'm clear. A light would probably be about here. So I should be plenty clear of a light. Um. And in the this part, there could be another light right here. So I'm just going to move this. I'm going to go into the wall and then I'm going to go back out six inches to make sure I'm six inches from the wall. And boy, I'm going to go eight feet off of this hallway wall. So I don't really need to worry about it, but I've even got coverage into my open uh this is like an open linen closet here and i have coverage into it wouldn't really be a, a problem if i didn't if i had the sprinkler down here it'd be an acceptable shadow area but um this is even better so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a line perpendicular from that head to that pipe then I'm going to extend that pipe to there. And then I'm going to draw a little nubbin pipe here from the center of that head perpendicular into here. Um, let's see. So our tank and pump is going to, we're going to put it right here against the wall in the garage. Um, this is, uh, this is it. Oops, move, there we go. Um, if anybody has uh, tried using DraftSite and wonder why they think my uh, controls look funny, it's because I have the classic uh, layout, um, which is similar to what AutoCAD LT was like when I first started using it way back in the day. I think it was AutoCAD LT 98, I think, or 99. Um, I started on AutoCAD 10 in high school <laughs> on DOS back in the day. Well, when I, my first job, I, we were using uh, AutoCAD LT, I was 98 or 99. Um, and it had this layout of the buttons like this. And I just like it. I'm used to it. I've been using it ever since. You can really maximize your uh, drawing space with these small buttons and just only have the buttons you need. For sprinkler design, you don't need a lot of tools. We've just been using basic tools. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this up tight against the wall here in the foundation. Some jurisdictions uh, actually require you to strap this in. Not a bad idea for seismic. Not everybody does. Um, 
So this is going to be our riser. We've got a symbol here we use for our riser. I'm going to put it on top of there. Oops, I'm going to copy. And we'll just plop it right here. This is where it's pipes coming up vertically out of our fire pump. And we're going to draw a line. It's at the ceiling here. And we're going to go... I think we'll just go, well, we'll go into there, there, extend that pipe to there. Um, let me see, I want to get this head eight feet off the wall. Um, okay, that's eight feet. I'm going to delete that, and I'm just going to extend that pipe into there. So now all of my piping connects, all of my sprinkler pipe. Um, so let's go ahead. At this point, um, we can start dimensioning our piping. We're going to switch to dim pipe. See what our dimension style is set to. Um, it's MCAD standard. We want MCAD sprinkler pipe. We're going to activate that. Hit OK. And then we're going to start dimensioning the pipe. We go head to head. First two points are where we're dimensioning from and to. And then now, where are we placing our dimension? I have this set up to go directly on the pipe. And now I can just use the continue and go to the next sprinkler, next sprinkler. Here's an intersection of pipe, a T, another T, a sprinkler, and the last sprinkler on that line. And now um, to simplify this for myself, to make it easier, I'm gonna select the pipe, the head, and the dimension, and I'm going to isolate my layers. It's going to make it a little easier for me to work with. And I will just continue dimensioning the rest of these from there to there. Continue from there to there, and then continue. Okay, and we just got a few more here. And one more. The riser in is uh, five foot three. So now I'm gonna go back um, to unisolate my layers. So, now, um, another thing we usually show a hanger symbol. And I've got this little tool here that I made for doing that. I'm just going to leave it right there. And um, so in NFPA 13D, um, you know, we're working with CPVC pipe and the hanger spacing is actually per this table, which we have right here, uh, CPVC. And on one inch pipe, uh, you have to have them spaced every six feet. Um, we don't show these uh, little ticks though every six feet, it's just too tedious. Um, no one's ever, no jurisdiction's ever said anything about it. We just have the rule on there, you know, saying where they should be. And we're just kind of giving you an idea. Um, this is where you need to put hangers. Um, with the CPVC pipe, they also need to be within six inches of the heads, not one foot. But we should just show them on here as a foot because... It's just hard, really hard to see on the drawing. If you show it at six inches, it's it's 
congested and you can't see it well. So we basically just put hangers on the piping as if we were on all piping on all sprinkler drawings as if it were basically one inch schedule 40 steel piping um one foot away from the heads one foot away from the end of piping and we have the chart that shows what the actual spacing is and it's just we just do that because it they don't show up clear if you're trying to show what they actually are. Um, we just, you know, and it's just confusing when you have a head that ends up, or a, a hanger symbol that ends up like this on top of your head, because you don't see it um, on the plans when they get printed out. So we just show them at a foot away um, to give you the idea of what's going on. So this is um i just you know every direction i just uh, have a, a reference point that i use um a foot away from where it would be and i just go through and do every direction and like and i also don't do any pipe under two feet which is what you would do with schedule 40 pipe, schedule 40 steel pipe, but that's not really what this is, obviously, but it's just like showing the hangers on there close enough. Uh, that one's under two feet, so I'm not gonna show it. It's just like, yes, there's hangers per the table. Okay, so now the only thing left to do, we're gonna, um, I'm not gonna do a calc, but I'll show you which heads we would pick. Uh, this top of riser is going to be, the riser's right there. So we need the, um, a room with two heads in it that's furthest away from the riser. This one's really close. It's really, they're all, there's not much difference. It's such a small house. So, but I'm going to say these two. And so I'm going to add a node. Um, some of you may be wondering, how do we do calcs? There's some options out there. Um, you don't need these uh, expensive programs. Um, I started out learning on Haas, which is an older program. Um, some of you may be familiar with. Um, I bought a program called Hydronics um, that works very similar to Haas. I was able to uh, step directly into it from Haas without um, any hiccups. Uh, but now I have a different program that I use. Um, it's 8800 Dashboard Hydraulics, which isn't the greatest name to remember, but it's a great program. I highly recommend it. And uh, maybe we'll do another uh, video someday about uh, hydraulic calc programs. One thing uh, I almost forgot is these change in elevation. We need to uh, put a little riser nipple there. We'll just take this and copy that over. Um, let's start right here. There's going to be one. Just gonna do this to stick it there. It's gonna be one inch and it's only gonna be one foot because it's a one foot elevation change in the ceiling. Um, but it's gonna be over a little bit. Let me move it by the quadrant. Snap to perpendicular. 
<clears throat> Oops. Forgot to move that with it. So let me do that again real quick. Oops, right there. Oh. That's where I wanted it. Okay. So we're going up a foot there, and we're going to have one over here. Um, there we go. Trim that out. And we just got one more right here. We're probably going to have to move things around a little bit to make it fit. Um, let's see, this is higher. So, that means the two by four framing would be about four inches out here with the sheetrock. So, let's just get this over here. So we want to move that over four inches now with ortho on. And that's not going to work with our line right there. So we're going to have to finagle that a little bit. Let's uh, let's move that about, let's see, that is one foot. Let's do that. Uh, trim that out. Now this has got to move. Let's move this head just over here, six inches. That'll be good. Oh, it's only five from there. Let's just do another inch. Makes it a little easier to read. And one more dimension here. Okay, now we're done. Let's move that off of there so it's easier for them. I don't know doesn't really matter because we're just suggesting the routing of piping actual piping location to be determined in the field so um, there we have an NFPA 13D layout and uh, thanks for watching <laughs>